Hey guys, so in this YouTube quick tip tutorial, I wanted to cover something that I've noticed gets asked kind of often, um, in particular to Houdini, uh, regarding crypto maths and using them with um, SOP level instances. So in this particular example, I have um, just a bunch of points and these spheres are scattered on them with random um, textures and stuff assigned per instance. And so normally, um, if you were to use a crypto mat for this, because they are instances, you won't get anything um, that's usable in terms of getting uh, an individual mat per instance. So let's just make a crypto mat here. And crypto mat has a couple options, node name, material name, object ID. So neither of these, if I render them, is going to give me the mat that I need for each object. So if we switch over to crypto mat, you'll see that all we're getting is the same mat for all our spheres and the same mat for all of our um, ground plane, right? And so that in particular is kind of a problem if you want to be masking out individual instances. And like I mentioned, it um, doesn't matter which mode you set it to, um, you're not going to be able to get that normally. Now, um, CryptoMat does have um, user data string support. Unfortunately, Redshift's CryptoMat integration doesn't have this available to it yet. And so I hope in the future they could add that since uh, user data strings are available in Redshift now. It's just CryptoMat has to be updated to um, add also support for the new strings um, feature. But in the meantime, there is a workaround. So as you can see, same problem. Um, the workaround is actually pretty straightforward, but you can't um, do this in one single pass, unfortunately. Um, you have to re-render your scene again um, to get the CryptoMat pass for specific um, instances. So the way you do it is um, you want to make sure your crypto mat is set to material name. This is the only mode this uh, workaround works in. And so the way it works in theory is that it makes um, random materials for all your instances. And so these fake um, dummy materials get picked up by this crypto mat. Um, material name ID type. So if we go now to our objects, you also need to make sure this switch here in your uh, Redshift object um, settings is activated. The uh, create crypto map material IDs from not available materials. This is on by default, but if for some reason it's not working for you, make sure this is checked on. And so the next step is you just need to make a, a, an attribute, a fake attribute that's going to make random materials on all your instances. So this is really easy. Just drop down a, a attribute create at the end of your chain and just drop a shop material path. And so this is going to create a material path, um, the shop attribute. And we need to switch this to string mode. And we'll just, you could give this any name you want. Um, we'll just say rand mat so random material and you want to use an attribute or expression to then randomize per point the assignment and so we're going to just use dollar sign pt and so what this does is it uses the um, the point number and so it's going to be creating a, a, a material called rand mat and then the point number and since each point number in our instance set is unique this is going to pick up a unique material or create a unique uh, material for each one. So if we go over here to shop material path, you'll see we have rand mat zero, one, two, three, four, and it goes through all of our instances, right? So that's how it's working in theory. And now if we make a render, You'll see that we've got a blue material and that's because it's making a fake material behind the scenes 
Um, it's going to cause kind of like a, the generic um, default material to show up. And so this is why you can't do this in one pass for now, unfortunately, but it is a workaround. And so if we switch over to the crypto mat, we now have individual IDs for every single instance inside of uh, SOPS instances. So that's how this workaround works. Um, you know, it's really simple, very, very fast and effective if you need to get this out for this specific um, approach. And of course, if you guys need to speed this up even further, then you could just, because um, you're, really you're only gonna need this for a data um, pass, then a workaround you could have is also just disable all your lights, um, turn off GI, And this will speed up your render time even fa uh, to be faster. Don't change your sampling settings though, because depth of field and motion blur you want to still be the same, matching your um, beauty. And so now if I render, this is gonna be even faster than it was before. And we should, and actually for some reason, it, oh, I didn't um, override the default light. So right now there's still um, a light activated from the looks of it. Let's try that again. Yeah, so you can see it, it rendered really quickly, but our crypto map pass is still there. So this is just a quick workaround if you guys need individual instance um, level crypto mats. Just disable your GI, disable all your lights, and get this cranked out really quick. Now, another neat um, thing about this, is let's just cut the attribute and we're going to activate a different object so this is a torus and let's say you want um crypto mats per face of an object right so you could just use the same um attribute so shot material path and a random material per point and then you just need to use a attribute promote Promote this attribute. So all you do is switch the new class from point to primitive. And we want to actually load the shot material path um, attribute here. And so what that's going to do is it's going to convert our point, random point material assignments to primitive assignments. And so if we render this, what we should be getting is a crypto mat there we go so we've now got a crypto mat for our ground plane and for this uh, torus each face is now its own individual crypto mat that we could select um, inside of nuke or fusion or any other crypto mat capable tool um, but yeah so um, this was just a quick tip tutorial just showing people how to do this because i see this get asked every so often in the redshift forums um, hopefully we'll actually add this to the documentation as it is a pretty useful workaround for now um, to quickly get crypto mats out for instances or for per face um, objects um, masking and so um, but yeah anyways hope you guys learned something new uh, in this short little tutorial um, I appreciate all the support on patreon and YouTube and I hope you guys have a great wonderful day